So would you swear to speak the truth? Is that essentially what we're asking? Yep. Okay. Great. Yes. Thank you. Um, the next item for the commissioners is the approval of the minutes from the last meeting on July 21st. Yeah. Uh, has anyone has have you had a chance to see the meeting minutes? And if yes, can I have a motion to Perfect. Good. Good. 
And on to uh, new applications. Uh, in fact, I think you've seen some of these before the trash to treasure project with the university district organization. Um, do we have speakers in the room for that? Sure. Lori, is that how we would? Um... Uh, yes, yeah, so Joseph Grove is here on behalf of the university district um, Great. organization. Yeah, uh, please. Could you all turn the mics on? Yeah, just like this. Thank you. Thank you. Just on. So, so this, maybe your mic is your mic on too? Yeah, perfect. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I think we're pulling up the material. You can explain why we're going directly to one person. Uh -huh. Yeah, so uh, my name is Joseph Grove. I'm here representing the university district organization. And um, the reason that we are going to directly to one person's submission is because initially we had assigned this particular dumpster and the artwork on it to an artist named Sam Bonnell Pangus. However, um, just this last weekend, there was some confusion that occurred in which another artist um, named Derek Kalender accidentally thought that Sam's dumpster was his and ended up painting over it um, instead. So we currently have a mural painted on that dumpster um, and we will be seeking approval for that. And then Sam's mural will be painted on what was supposed to be Derek's dumpster. I realized that Monday morning and had to get that sorted out with Lori. So. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone could hang tight for just a moment. We're trying to pull up the. Yeah, start with the PDF, which is the concept. Okay, thank you. Sorry, one more. Oh. Oh. Okay, okay. Thank you. Sorry. So, um, basically, the Trash to Treasure project, um, this is the second iteration of a project that we're doing. The first iteration was in 2019 where we painted murals on various dumpsters um, in the university district in an attempt to both improve aesthetics while also decreasing incidents of graffiti. Um, that iteration of the project was a huge success. The area, look of the area dramatically improved um, and tagging went way, way down. In the two years since the project has been implemented, there is only one recorded incidence of tagging that has occurred in which I am aware of. Um, this iteration, we're doing the same thing in Pearl Alley um, on 11 different dumpsters. Out of those dumpsters, 10 are privately owned, one is publicly owned, and that is the one that we are talking about tonight. Um, as for Derek Kalender's initial proposal, um, he plans to draw his dumpster something like this. Um, the idea was to have a character floating in space with um, each side of the dumpster representing a different aspect of the face and then one side showing the whole thing and how it all comes together. Um, in his final concept, which he actually put on the dumpster, it's more or less the same There we go. It's more or less the same thing, but with some slight alterations, um, adding some additional details and features which were not present in the original concept. Uh, because we also wanted to give the artists some creative freedom once they had seen their actual dumpster after submitting the concepts to adapt things accordingly. So this is what the dumpster currently looks like um, under Derek's submission. Personally, I think it looks really good.
then do we want to go to the um, supporting materials? Or? I think we can stay focused on the dumpster fishing. Do okay. you want to go through all of the images for the private dumpsters, or do you want to stay with us? Um, I've checked them out. Do you do you feel like we need to check them out here as well? Good. Good. Um, are there any questions? Um, so I understand that it's supposed to be a monthly meal for five years. So I know we are not quite there yet. It's only two years. So I just want to know, like, after five years, what's the plan of, you know, taking these meals down? Or what's the plan after five years? So after five years, um, we would either be removing the murals or seeking some kind of additional project with them. Um, we haven't fully developed the plans for that yet, but we do have a new executive director for the university district organization starting this upcoming week, and she will play a huge role in helping to determine exactly what those plans will be coming down the line. So is it correct to assume that within this five years, there's some funding setting aside, you know, in case any vandalism that happens? Yes, absolutely. So for this dumpster, we have $500 set aside um, in order to pay the artist and reimburse them for supplies in the event that there was any damage to the dumpster or uh, any vandalism that occurred. And that would be used to correct and fix any issues. And is the artist responsible for that? Um, we would be paying them to take care of that in the event that that occurred. That way it could match the artwork and be maintained properly. Other questions? Um, I, as a working artist, I think I'd want to know at, at the end of the five years, I'm off the book. <laughs> have to keep editing it or after five years, you're not expecting your artist to come back either, right? No, no. After five years, they're completely off the hook. So. About 500 for the first year. <laughs> because you had 500 available, that's why I was wondering. Um, just for that process, what is the time frame and the artist expectancy within that 500? you repeat the question? I'm sorry. Um, on your maintenance strategy, mm -hmm. you have 500 available to maintain the artwork and pay the artist for supplies. I'm just wondering what the time frame you're estimating for that payment is. Oh, yes. So that $500 is available um, throughout the length of the artwork. So it's five years. Yes. Okay. Are there other questions? Great. Then I think we are ready for a motion for final approval of the design and placements of the temporary artwork by Derek Callender, already completed on the dumpster located in the alley in the rear of Jersey Mike Sun. Can I have a motion? <laughs> I think we're all approving. Yes. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, all right. So on to our next project, uh, Starling Garage on the Scioto Peninsula. I think uh, Amanda Golden, yeah. Here, and we have another guest as well. Good afternoon, everyone. Nice to see you again. Thank you so much for having us. Should we introduce uh, our firms and also the firms that are I think so. And um, my name is Amanda Gold, managing principal of Designing Local. We are located at 110 East Main and Suite 311. I'm Dan Haynes, a managing member of the Columbus Architectural Studio, 405 North Street. Thank you. We also have two other, three other members of our team in the audience as well. 
do you want them to state their name, Lori, or would you like us to? I think you just okay. Uh, the other members of our team, Amy Taylor. Then I would to not work. Yes. From CDC. And then we also have Jennifer Flores. And okay, so you're going to control our presentation. Um, do you... you can control it. It's right. Okay. Uh, so we'll go ahead and go to the first slide. So to kick the project off today and the presentation off, we'd like to talk a little bit about the project overview and why we're here today and what we're seeking from you. Um, we are uh, coming before you today for some conceptual consideration of placement of artwork as well as to present to you the process in which we will solicit uh, qualifications and then proposals once we've selected the finalist in order to um, complete a series of artworks. And I'll let Dan give a little bit of an overview of the peninsula development itself. I'm sure many of you know all about the peninsula, but also about the garage. Sure. So um, we're the uh, conceptual designers for the parking structure of the side of the peninsula, the southern peninsula. Uh, developed by the CDVC uh, has multiple uh, as, uh, aspects to it. There, there's an office building, there's multi-family residential, there's hotels, and all that. And there's a public parking component as well to the two of the designs. Okay. Uh, we're the first project that will be completed, so we're talking to you about sort of that project first on sort of the the on project. And so. Um... The CDC is the city of Columbus's development partner in this development. And so because they are contributing money to the garage, uh, the garage is a, a $30 million total budget. And um, of that budget, the garage is contributing $250,000 to public art on the garage itself. And then there is a second phase, which is not being talked about today as part of this presentation, but will be revisited. And it'll be an additional $250,000 spent within the peninsula. Uh, but in an undetermined location because the planning has not occurred for that. So of the 250,000 that we're talking about today, we wanted to show you the locations in which we're proposing that public art be placed. So um, we have divided the, the, the funding into two different buckets further from the 500,000 to 250. So we're dividing that original 250 into two different buckets. The first will be $50,000 dedicated to three murals on the garage at a pedestrian level. So these will be um, uh, mural panels that will be affixed to the garage that are small enough to be experienced by a pedestrian, but not so small uh, that you can't see them from a car or you know, come across the street. And then the second will be a what we're calling a garage sculptural element. So we do not know what it is at this time, but it will be a more substantial piece of art that could be affixed in, in quite a few different locations. We want to go over those today. Then I'll let Dan discuss that. Sure. So I think that as we're looking at the garage itself, it's sort of its impactfulness to kind of the neighborhood um, as well. Uh, sort of in what we've highlighted in red is sort of the larger scale. Those are a pedestrian towers of the building, uh, vertical circulation, stairs, elevators, if you will. Uh, we were thinking it would be ideal because this is at uh, State Street. This would be the sort of gateway uh, from the side of development in the Franklin tent, sort of the gateway piece, sort of that we were thinking that those would be a possible prime location with, you know, the, the, the mural panels being down low, so associated with that. But the thought would be that we would try to reserve a, a tower, two towers for this artwork of the, of the larger scale, what that could possibly be, is an option that we have. Um, and this is it from the other side as well, too. So this is sort of from State Street, you can kind of see where those towers would be. Um, the secondary one is that there are the mural panels in this option here, the garage has, um, just due to the physical nature of the garage, it's, it's a little more opaque to the street. We have the possibility of getting some artwork down low on that portion of the south garage as well. So we're sort of the murals 
where things would either be along State Street or down at this former pig kennel. It's a star. And then we had another consideration here. This, the, the north garage is a longer garage, and uh, Brush Street ends at sort of this pedestrian focal point here. And so we have two towers there that could be the opportunity with some artwork that could happen down below, either to the side or underneath those, right? So it's really the kind of a larger scale would be more impactful for the entrance into Franklinton or this being sort of a end focal point of Rush Street. So those are the two uh, locations that we think are the most appropriate for the larger scale. And so, um... All of the pieces that are going to be on the garage will be on the exterior, not on the interior. So it won't be on the elevator bays themselves. So you won't have to have parked your car to experience the art. It really will be for people who are walking nearby. They'll be able to see this art, come up to it, uh, you know, hopefully touch it, see it, experience it, and really love it. Um, and uh, it's important for us to note as well that we will not be allowing the artists to paint directly on the brick. We're going to be asking them to. Um, we'll be providing a panel structure, but they'll be painting on a panel, so it will not damage the brick. It's a brand new garage, uh, and and the same goes for the sculptural element as well. So um, Dan's team knows very well what the structure can handle, and so the artist, whoever it is that is selected, will work with that team to make sure that the load of the piece can be supported by the existing structure, so there will not be any additional engineering. Um, additional electric or utilities being run to the site to accommodate the artwork. The other thing too to note is that the um, sculpture element will not be placed on the glass for safety considerations. So the glass will be kept open. So there's high visibility for those who are utilizing the stair from the outside. Our concern is just sort of pedestrians feel it safe. Yeah. But we believe that there's plenty of space to place a sculpture element on those brick features. Uh, so we just provided a few uh, benchmark images for your consideration, just to show, show what to expect. We hope they're colorful, uh, fun, and really bring a, a lot of joy to this area um, and a lot of identity. Hopefully, you know, artists are really fantastic at creating identity of spaces, and, and they will play a major role in doing so uh, in this area. And you can scroll to the next. Image. And then here are just some other images that I pulled uh, of how sculptural elements have been integrated into parking garages themselves. I do want to note that the bottom left image is a Mark Regelman piece at the San Diego airport. <laughs> uh, I just had to plug them in there. So, uh, but these are just some sample images of what to expect in the future. So, how are we going to get to that point? Um, we are going to release an RFQ, which is a request for qualifications for both projects. That will be done next month with your approval today. Uh, there will be two releases. One will be for mural artist. One will be for artists who work in sculpture. They will be asked to submit 10 images of their past work, a letter of uh, interest, as well as their resume, and three references. It will be an online platform. No paper is needed. It will be really quick, simple submission. Um, uh, our selection panel will gather in November. We'll select those finalists. We are not sure what the selection panel will decide. If there will be three finalists, there will be six finalists. That's unde undecided at this time, but it could be three. And then those three artists are the selected artists and then asked to create concepts and proposals. Um, or it could be six, and then they're asked to create concepts or proposals. All the artists will be paid for their time. Um, and um, uh, for their concepts as well. So no artist will be asked to provide any proposal without being compensated. The uh, finalists will also be selected for the garage element in November, and we're not sure, again, how many people will be finalists, but there will be an RFP issued to them at that time in which a stipend will be um, you know, given to them uh, once they deliver their concepts. And um, we will give them until January 22 to deliver those concepts. Um, we expect them to be, you know, either on drawing files, rendered in, rendered into photographs, so that we can see realistically the scale of the work, how it's going to um, be.
specific to the building and what kind of uh, presence we can expect. We'll also be requiring those artists to submit maintenance plan uh, of their work as well. It's at that time, once we have received those proposals from both the muralist and the sculptured artist, come back to you with those selected artists, show you where we believe they are to be placed and seek your final approval uh, on the artwork at that time. Um, of course, we don't need design drawings for our muralist, but we will have a series of permits and other design drawings that are gonna be required for the sculptural element. We anticipate that the mural installation will be in May of 22, and the garage opens in June. Uh, I would love to say that the sculptural element could also be finished and installed by that time. But as you know, uh, materials are changing every single day, so we cannot say that at this time, but we do anticipate the summer of 22 installation. And now we can open the floor for questions. Okay. I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, kind of a broader vision for the project. Um, aside from the building itself and the setting, are there um, requirements or, you know, kind of uh, strategic concepts in place for artists to respond to? Um, as part of this call, are you intending for the artwork to be um, integrated in some way, conceptually? Um, is there going to be a, a shared kind of set of values? Can you speak to that? I think that the selection panel will ultimately uh, guide that decision-making process. Um, I think on a garage and the utilitarian structure that it is, I think it would be interesting to allow the murals to kind of unfold naturally and then to see how the proposed artwork responds to the murals. And I imagine that during the selection panel, there will be a lot of discussion about how the selected murals at that time will interact with whatever the concepts are for the sculpture. Um, as far as react, giving something to, for the artists to react to, I think we would probably give some uh, general things to react to. I think color, noting the history of the area, um, kind of the intention behind the peninsula itself, which is to really uh, bring additional energy to that area of town. That is uh, that area specifically being uh, quite empty. Um, but in terms of we need it to you know, honor the history, these three elements of the history of the site, no, we are not. I'm curious about the RFQ process. So I think I kind of like experienced that myself, you know, a lot of time when this is the RFQ for a mural specifically. And so are you only looking for others that who have done, you know, that kind of you know, mural, you know, in terms of size, scale, you know, more specifically is the medium itself, right? It has to be mural. Or there might be ways in which that it can be a little bit more multidisciplinary. So let's just say, uh, maybe incorporate greenery in the you know, in the mural. Like, like, I don't know if like, there might be some ways in which in the RFQ can be even more um, inclusive, I don't know, maybe open it up to other disciplines, something like that. I, I, I was just thinking that because I experienced it myself, like, oh, you know, I'm just not qualified you know, for the other skill, or I may as well not, you know, that. I think that's a really great point. And um, we can make the language broad enough so that that can be a discussion of the selection panel when the submissions are made. I should also note that we are only opening the mural component up to Central Ohio artist. Mm -hmm. The sculpture element will be open nationally, but the mural component will only be open to Central Ohio. Mm -hmm. So I think there will be some play because I think a lot of the selection panel likely will have experienced some of the other artist work around town. And we'll be able to say, oh yeah, I think that that artist could work on this scale if they have it before. Mm -hmm. You know, or if they could consider partnering with this person, you know what I mean? So this kind of conversations can happen in that way. Yeah. Are we going to be notified who is going to be in the selection panel? We do. We have their names so far. Um, Lori is going to sit on the panel. 
We also have um, another member of city staff sitting on the panel, and her first name is Anne, and I cannot remember her last name, and I'm so sorry. Amy Kelly. Amy Kelly. Uh, Amy Taylor will sit on the section panel as well as Dan. And is there a fifth? Uh, yeah, actually, Dan will be part of the representation okay. of Amy City. One of the developers, that's a, you know, a guest in the event, uh, the developers, three developers chose someone and they chose the person from Rockbridge, which is the hotel as well. And they have Jamie Goldstein from the UCA Center. I think, too, Eliza, just to um, respond a little bit more to your question, I think the city is doing a really great job in uh, providing a bunch of different opportunities at different experience levels for artists who want to become mural artists. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to toot my own horn with sell event project, but that was kind of the intention behind that is to give some opportunity to those artists who may not have felt qualified because they hadn't done it before, but now they now they have done it and have something you know to show and apply to something like this. So. Uh, I think this is a kind of next step of that as well. I think to Eliza's point, and not to belabor this too much, but you know, the concept of mural might be somewhat limiting. I think you know, describing it perhaps in more experimental, collaborative ways, I think um, could bring you a lot of very interesting projects. Other questions? Um, I just want to clarify for my notes the um, State Street North, State Street South, and Brush. Um, those are options. Yes. But one of them will be selected. Yes. So when one of them will be selected, if the mural and the sculptural elements would go on the same side, if that is selected, and we'll come back with those concepts together so that you all can see what was. So there might be some flexibility to that? Yes. Is the sculpture piece going to be included in the, the construction documents I'm looking for permit, or is this after permit? And it's, this is after permit. We're already, it's well under construction. Then I guess that. Then the project is well under construction. Are there any other questions? There's the murals first and the sculpture is under the timeline. Sorry, I'm just saying, saying that that's how it's going to roll just because we know that the murals can be installed by the opening. We would like for them to be installed within the same time frame in advance of the grand opening of the garage. Will the muralist and the sculpture person be able to collaborate? Right. Yeah. Okay. Especially if it's right under the sculpture piece. Yeah. I have this vision now after you talked and Bosco Towers in, I think, Milan, Italy. I don't know if you're familiar yes. with the project. Yeah. Mural sculpture, something. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? I think we are then ready to. Make a motion for the conceptual approval of the art plan and placement of artwork on the city owned Sterling Garage for the process proposed to select artists for um, city code 3115.04 A and B. I have a motion. I have a motion. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mr. Motion approved. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see, do we have any new business to discuss, Lori? Are you aware of anything? Unless we have some, yeah. Yep. Uh, how about old business? Um, we have yeah. um, Mark Regalman piece. <laughs> You guys are a little bit. I'll be seeing where you'll be there, but um, it was there. Mm -hmm. Incredibly, but it held off. 
most everything was done. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think Mark, Mark seemed really happy. Yeah. And, um, this is wonderful. And the artist talk was really good, I thought, with Matthew and Mark, and that's available on um, YouTube. So if anyone is interested in seeing it, they can search under Columbus Art Commission. The dedication is there, and then also the um, the artist talk is there. So um, I, I really recommend it to anyone who's interested. Mark went through some of his projects and talked about them, which is sort of how he works as an artist. So um, I think it's just a great um, resource. Plus, he's just such a fascinating guy. Um, so it's, it'll be entertaining. <laughs> So um, the piece is done, and uh, we're waiting for some um, photographs to be completed. Mark is trying to work it out with a whole artist or excuse me, a photographer now to do the to do the photographs. Um, they're professional shots. He's interested in having them. Um, Abby Camagate, uh, of course, our team by her book. Some great photographs. I haven't gotten all those yet, but I'll be getting those from Mark. Um, and when she's done, she's going to give me, I think they're called gels, basically cellophane that's cut out in the shape of the can lights that are out there. I don't know if you've seen, but he was playing around with some colors, um, on the sculpture with stainless steel and flex away. Actually, the can lights are bigger than any of those, can't really <laughs> But they do a really nice job um, on the term at a table. Uploading and done. And, and it seems like it was a good choice. And it's a landscape and grows in hopefully. Um, but um, what I will probably do is in the give the gels over to the short north alliance so that they have them. Um, and the discretion they have going on with it. So it's like still the way from up towards the traffic colors are great with and you know because it's very nice and easy but so we don't want that. Um and I'm sure that the short arm alliance will be really careful um to use those colors and really interesting stuff. So um yeah, they're excited. They've been getting really good responses to it. I've been going out there and just kind of watching people um, look at it, and it's there's kind of a pattern. People they sort of are it's curious because it's big and it's sort of exploding out of the ground. And they walk away, and then they do the sign, and then they come back to it again. Like they have to find the sign because it's had to put it in place. Um, and they start noticing shapes, and then it's very exciting to watch people find their first shape. Um, because it's a little bit like one of those the psychology tests, you know, <laughs> the base is a space, so I don't know, it's a negative, positive, negative space. So it's it's been really important. Um so any any of your thoughts I know Brian? I yeah, it is it is wonderful. And uh, I commute, I bike commute downtown, so I bike by it every day. It's fun to see. Yeah. I wonder if there are other programs after they're taken. Is it on the website? Yeah, we'll put them up once we have once we have those. I haven't I haven't put much of yet, but we will. And Short North Alliance has been doing a nice job with their their page, and they have a lot more flexibility on them. Whole package, and we'll put it on the site. It does call to mind that, you know, when we did Terry's pieces of gear, the thing to have that's interesting. And so that's been added to the contract. And it's good. Um, but I can't remember the name of the artist, Nick something over at the Columbus Foundation. The foundation's been uh, in the, the photograph to this, and it's almost been give attribution. We can use that one. And um, I think it's funny that you're biking by biking by Mark's and you always walked by Terry's for a long time. So. 
They get a lot of personal attention. Yeah. Yeah. Diane? I happen to see it on. That he is actually from the South because I was uh, having a meeting at Reward. Oh, so we actually see it from you know from the, from a high uh, perspective down there. It's equally interesting. So I was just uh, thinking that it's not only contributing to the streetscape, but also you know for all the hotels around the game. Because like, people can see it from. It's a really interesting perspective. Yeah. Like, definitely get a lot. Um. Diane, you were there also. You were there for the installation. If you guys want to move up, please. <laughs> I mean, you're welcome to sit at the table. Um, <laughs> Diane, yeah, you guys all know Diane. You know, Jennifer Kenny, Deputy Director in our department, will be um, working with us on some of the mayor's projects. So I hope I'm not something with them. Um, Diane, any thoughts you want to hear about installation and all? Let's, it, it, it took a while, but <laughs> it was um, it, it, it's been well received by the public, which is important. And I think uh, I was pleased that the city, um, even then with the difficulties that you had to go, the city was really amenable and supported the artist. So I was really happy about that. Sorry. Um, if you haven't had a chance to look at it. Um, okay, so the other thing is the Christopher Columbus Statue Committee. Um, we didn't have a meeting this month as planned because um, six people couldn't make it. So that was problematic. Plus, all of the indigenous representatives couldn't make it. Um, and I did some follow up. Um, it's difficult finding another time that's reasonable that this room is open. Mm -hmm. um, so all the recording equipment, if you want to put it up on YouTube, and this meeting is still being recorded. Um, so I I wanted to follow up, uh, and I did with Marty uh, Chatsmith because her email. I wonder if she's going to be able to come to any of the in person meetings because. It was a it was a pretty pretty abrupt transition for all of you that are you know have been participating in um, to go from virtual meetings to in person meetings. Um, she has someone in her home who's immunocompromised, and they've been advised that to you know, all the family members to just not be in public places, and so she is not going to be able to attend many meeting. Um, her voice has been, I think, a, a strong one for the times that she's been participating. So we talked for a while, and I um, took it upon myself to encourage her to still speak with Dan and Shelly. I'm still uh, trying to reach Shelly to make sure that she can come to the in-person meetings. Dan has been able to come. Um, so that her, um, her perspective can still be integrated into you know, the committee and, and recommendations. Um, and she agreed to, she was, she was happy with that to still have some way of, of engaging. She'll be talking to Dan and Shelly and uh, understands our need to start wrapping up the context part of the discussion and, um, you know, the desire to uh, start packaging those materials up for when we have consultant to um, take that and put it into the actual um, narrative that would accompany the statue, uh, but we still need to vote on that a little ahead of ourselves. Um, but, you know, I think for, for those folks, um, they want to make sure that the context is there and that it's representative and tells um, a broader story about the um, Act of uh, Christopher Columbus and you know history is kind of a moving target and when it's made each day, but we know more now than we did it's in the fifties. We have to include that information. We just want um, to know that that's going to happen. Sure, the number is going to have to be there. What we want to discussion. Um, one of the other things that we talked about. 
that could very well be a recommendation coming from um, particularly those representatives to the committee that conferred and asked me the committee to make this recommendation as well is seeking support for a uh, totally new unaffiliated with Christopher Corner plan that's got a new um, public artwork that is looking at indigenous communities and that that's Put out there as a future, a future public artwork, uh, and again, I'm looking at that possibly as a performance committee to this commission. Just to kind of get the, the feelers out for that. So we haven't really changed anything from the last time we met, so I'm going to go through that. We have to nail down actual conversation. Take a vote on with that in place, um, and the idea of having it go to a consultant to have them come up with the actual narrative that would accompany the piece, and, and as well as how that would be displayed. Um, and before we have any conversation about site, you know, the site condition, site uh, specification, things that you consideration. Site considerations. We need to know it's going to be So that's really where we are. Um, that's what we were trying to learn. Thoughts or comments about the guys? Good about it. About it. So the other thing that I would like to ask is that. Um, since Diane is, we're awaiting uh, hopefully her reappointment to the art commission, her term expired. I would um, like to ask um, you, it's not necessary for her to be the chair of the commission to be the chair of the Christopher Columbus committee, but um, I think it would be helpful if you could um, take a vote on having Diane um, maintain her position as chair of the Christopher Columbus committee. That's something, um, vice chair, that you would be willing to consider. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you for reminding me. I'm happy to make a motion to uh, keep Diane as the, as the chair of that subcommittee. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and Laurie, quick question about the committee meeting. From an equity accessibility standpoint, is that um, is that do committee meetings have to be in person? Is, are there exceptions possible? It's open meeting laws that our state um, state allowed meetings during COVID lockdown to happen virtually mm -hmm. and through that option. Mm -hmm. So they have to be in person. So I talked to the city attorney about this. Yeah, you have to have to have to have to have to Without exceptions, no exceptions possible no. in these kind of mitigated I, I, circumstances. I tried. Yeah. And, you know, certainly. I think people were kind of dialing into it, you know, uh, picking up on YouTube or looking at it. Um, and everybody had much better participation, certainly from the committee members. Still, it's really difficult. There's just no way. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I just thought I'd ask. And the other thing I wanted to just talk a little bit about, although uh, um, Jennifer is your um, and um, she has been meeting with me and those on a couple of occasions talking about some of the different mayor's tasks and um, that she will be um, taking the lead on is the city symbols um, and exciting that I think they're interested in and Matthew as well. Um, I've shared uh, 
information and the math we have done date. So that's going to be transitioning over to the Senate for the last quarter goal. So we just need it for that. Um, we don't have any funds yet for that, but um, I think what Jennifer and I will be doing next step is putting some time steps together, timetables, and people with these activities. And we haven't really had any big other um, idea. Another Jennifer, I think you'd like to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I found part of me. My commitment is to help be able to champion for the process and help create timelines and structures and help keep the city accountable to their milestones so that it proceeds. Um, as expediently as it can while getting the engagement that we're seeking and try to be a champion for the city's participation. I think that's a really welcome addition. Um, I know support, so happy to. Um, one of the other tasks that we're looking at right now is the collections piece, and we may have some money available to um, retain someone to do the initial work, not uh, of the uh, looking at the collection and sort of firming up our information about the collection and also looking at the uh, pieces themselves, the artists, seeing you know, some of the background about what we're able to find with the goals um, to some of that, uh, that would be difficult to back on. Um, also, the diversity of our existing collection, which that's pretty straightforward. Um, so which diversity is ever popular. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so that um, that part, I think, will go um, pretty quickly, but it will be good to get that knocked out. And then uh, the next piece, I'm not sure that we'll have funding for this year. Um, I think for what I just talked about, um, Sort of the assessment of what we have, make sure we have all accounted for. Uh, we probably have some funds. We probably probably have some funds to over forty, which would be higher. Possibly like a graduate uh, PhD intern to come in. Fantastic. So that's exciting. And then um, after that's done, probably next year, then we look for the money to start looking at the second one, which is to have someone assist with coming up with a strategy for diversifying our calls and attracting um, diverse artists to participate in the city's collection for artist calls, how to pull that together. So um, that's exciting. The next piece that I'll be working on is the RFQ for um, the new artwork for the downtown campus. Uh, starting to put that together and try to get to take a look at um, because we have some funds to uh, that. So that's really exciting. Um, and then we talked about the research policy phase. I haven't seen it, but we made some steps. And yeah, it's starting to explain, which is actually So that's after what. Um, any questions or thoughts? I'm not sure about that. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah sorry. Um, throughout that discussion of the collection and the other history of the statue, um, I'm reminded that some of the things in the collection probably fall outside that five year report from um, uh, AK Lodge. AK Lodge. Um, and I'm not sure if our conservation has kept up with the pace that we thought we would. So is that anywhere in the um, budget? Yeah, discussion? actually, one of the things that uh, I talked to the director about is um, the K Lodge. Like I hear a lot of times this time. Um, they came in and they did a set, an assessment of the works that we knew about the the outdoor public art that we knew about, 
and it, and interestingly, some of the pieces that needed the most attention were those on the riverfront, and those almost immediately started working. Um, they went into storage. Uh, they did the restoration. Of, so, uh, so those pieces have all been returned. And they're all behind the scenes. That I have that on the board with that now same pot that we're uh, looking to for the uh, RQ for the, the our plan that was um, given uh, a good night for the RQ. Yeah, it won't it won't happen until next year, but the goal is to get that out for next year um, to have a board comment. Take a look at those pieces. Um, some of them are going to be uh, attention and some of them. Yeah. Um, Sounds like we're ready to adjourn. Yeah. Unless there are other questions. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Are we over? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, done.